What's up, Detroit? This is the Riles and Riley Rundown, back for another episode. Sorry we couldn't get a pregame in this week. We both got a little bit busy. Um, well, week six is in the books now. Uh, get to talk about some good yeah. for, a little, for the first time in a while. Uh, well, you get to talk about a win for the first time Which in a is some time. good. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, we really haven't got to talk about... Last week, there was no positive, really. The week before, there was very minimal positive. Right. Last week probably would have been the best positive, because we were only talking about the Tigers, so... Uh, <laughs> but this game... Came down to basically the same thing that's happened all season to the, or for the Lions. It was horrible through the first three quarters, as always, and somehow they can pull it off in the fourth quarter, as usual. Um, as we said before, are you going to win a Super Bowl like that? No, because you can't continue to rely on coming back in the fourth quarter for every single game. Um, is it going to work against your mediocre teams? Like Honestly, I will throw Philadelphia into the category as a mediocre team right now. Um, that team looks like they're in a My lot of trouble. My problem with putting them there is because they beat Baltimore. They, they've competed with good teams. I, I put them as a playoff contender. You're not going to beat the uh, the uh, Houstons, and you're probably not going to beat the Green Bays like that. Yep. But You might not beat the Chicago. No, like I, that, I was going to say, Chicago is going to be... Speaking of Chicago, that's going to be a tough game. We'll talk about... We'll, we'll probably have a, a very interesting uh, pregame to that later on in the week. Yep. But uh, let's, let's get talking game. a little bit about this game. Uh, this was actually a huge win for the Lions. I think me and Brendan both had this down for a loss going into the yep, uh, I believe so. pre- or into our preseason rank or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, yeah, um, this is a big win, though. Uh, coming off the Tennessee game where it was a heartbreaker, off the bye week, uh, they came well, back. Well, it was Minnesota, actually, before or, the bye Yeah, week. Minnesota, my bad. But uh, Coming off the Minnesota and Tennessee losses. We, we said going into Minnesota that they needed to win that to save their season, and there's no doubt, um, because now what you needed to do, and I believe we said this in the post game to Minnesota, now it's no, no you have no longer have win this game in your back, win yeah. that game in your back. Nope. You need, at the very, very minimum, a three-game winning streak. And I you started it, but now you need to go into Chicago on Monday night, which, I mean, Chicago looks great. You have it Monday night in Chicago. The one thing I want to point out is Chicago seems to they seem to feel, they seem to feel the pressure on national TV. Hopefully we get something. I don't care if we win this game because Jay Cutler just looks terrible. Right. I don't care what it is. You get that win, it, and all of a sudden you you come back. Can, you got a shot to beat Seattle at home. They need to to get this uh, record above five hundred as soon as possible. Yep. And if you do that, maybe we can start talking playoffs. Too early to do that right now. Still, nice win stops you from literally throwing the season away at one and four. Yeah, biggest thing now is instead of being uh, three games back, you're only two games back of first place with Minnesota, and you're only a game and a half back of the wild card. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, Green Bay is going to step it up here th- uh, pretty soon. It might have been this week that they saved their season. Now, with the be- Houston. Oh, that would have been but, a huge loss. Yeah, but, but before uh, we get right into what happened in this game, speaking of being uh, two games back in Division One and uh, the wild card, what I was thinking is the NFC doesn't look. Quite, it's tough. It's wide open. It doesn't right look now. as tough as we thought it would be. No, well, there's a lot of surprise teams that we didn't expect, like your and Arizona's. Usually those and those teams fall off towards the end of the year, even if yeah. they still make it. But what I would like to say is, uh, in sports, a lot of times, especially in football, if you can st- stay around that 500 mark, preferably one game ahead or at 500 for you know the first eight nine games of the season. Turn if you can turn it on at the end of the season, the Lions are not out of the playoff race. But like I said, it's too early to talk about that now. I'm let's, telling let's you right. The, I'm telling right now, Seattle will not stay in the playoff race. For and I, I don't think long. Minnesota will either. Yeah, it's Arizona. I I said from the start. I, did Arizona win this week? Uh, Arizona lost, I believe. Um, Arizona did lose to Buffalo yeah. in overtime. Yeah. Um, I do believe Arizona will stay up in that race. I don't think Minnesota will. To yeah. be honest, I don't think Washington will. But I don't even know if they're quite in it right now. Yeah. But uh, let's get a little bit more on this game. Yeah. Tom, uh, you can start it off. Um, all right. I'm gonna any, th- any big key points you want to point out? Yeah, I'm going to throw off one huge point. Uh, we're in week six now. Matthew Stafford still has yet to throw a touchdown in the first three quarters of a football game. That is ridiculous. That means out of 15 of your 20 quarters, your star quarterback has not thrown a touchdown. He's driven them down the field. He's gotten the yards. But you've got to see the and, end zone. And that, I mean, gets, that gets me to my number one key point about this team as a whole. Um, I'm sure you guys all heard about that anonymous GM who said the Lions are a long-term fix. I think this team needs one thing, start scoring in the red zone. Yep. Because I, I did the math just yesterday, actually. Where, where do you think Stafford's yards are? He's what? probably top five, not, top Not just six. that, but if he, if he kept this rate up at yards per game for the rest of the season, where do you think he'd be total yards? Probably just above 5,000 again. Just below. Just below, 40, yeah. 4,800. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's an elite year. Yep. And, I mean, Jason Hansen, I believe, has kicked 15 field goals. Yep. Or made 15. He's kicked 16. I mean, the guy is 
he kicked four yesterday, or four, uh, four Sunday, all from inside the red zone. If all this team needs to do is figure out how to score in the red zone, and that's not necessarily an easy fix. No, but but once you get there, the defenses look good enough. I mean, what do you have to say? My biggest thing is third down efficiency from this game. That's going to be my number one point to take away from yeah, the game. Yeah, that's uh, it was frustrating me the entire game. We were three for thirteen, as I'm looking at the stats right now, uh, for third down efficiency. Uh, you can't have that if you want to be a winning football team. I mean, you've got to be able to convert on some of your third downs, and I know three would probably consider for some some. You know, but. interesting stat I would like to look at. Uh, I don't know where in the world I could find that, but uh, would be our average third down length. Because a couple of years back, before this team was a legitimate threat, one of their biggest concerns was that they were always third and seven. It yeah. doesn't feel like that. No, it seems like it seems like now Stafford's getting into or getting you into a point where you are third and three, third and four. But when you get to that point, you just don't know what's going to happen because that's usually when he can dump it off to Pettigrew or dumps it off to one of the or, uh, running backs. And the running backs and uh, Pettigrew have really killed us this year with the drop passes. I mean, Titus Young, same way. Well, um, I've, I've seen a lot of throwing the ball in front of the the first down marker yep, too. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any concerns with Stafford long term. I really don't. I think Stafford's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league within two to three years. Yeah. Well, one, going back to what we were talking about in the red zone, um, I believe that Matthew Stafford's biggest problem in the red zone is the fact that when he gets down there, he gets into gunslinger mode. And I don't know if you saw the last few minutes of that game when we drove in the fourth quarter with a chance. Or I'm sorry, it might have been. It might have been actually, yeah, it was the fourth quarter. At the very end of the fourth quarter, there's about 15 seconds left. He got into gunslinger mode, and he almost lost the game for us. He threw three passes down in the red zone. All three of them were almost intercepted by Philadelphia. And you actually speak about that. I believe he has five interceptions on the year. Yep. And I think he has three in the red zone. Yep. Um, he, he That confidence, man, I, I said from the, the day he uh, played his first Lions game, his number one problem seems to be he's overconfident. Yep. He and thinks he can squeeze the ball into any area that he can possibly and if, get if it If you to. can tone that down, it's a they they got to score in the red zone. And you know, a lot of times us as fans, you know, we all feel we have the solution. Yeah. I think this is one of the first teams I've seen in any sport where I personally, I mean, of course, the coach would know better than me, anyways. But I can't look at one thing that's going to fix it. Yep. The, I mean, I wish we wouldn't run the ball so much on third down, but they've slowed that down a lot. Um. Our passing plays, we gotta. We're not passing it past the first down marker sometimes, or having like you mentioned, drop passes. I heard going into the uh, weekend that we were actually the highest team in the league for dropped passes. Yep. And this was one of those games where Stafford wasn't as efficient either, as far as completion percentage. Uh, I think in the first half he was five for fifteen, maybe. I think he might have started out five for fifteen, and he ended up twenty-two or forty-five. Uh, that's usually not what we see from Stafford. So I mean, and compliment Philly's defense; they do have a really good secondary. Oh, they have some so, of the best. They have some of the best uh, exactly, corners in the league. Exactly. So I mean, you got to compliment them too. Um, the next thing I want to get at with the Lions is defense. Uh, great to see Lewis Thomas back on the field. Yeah. Uh, he completely changed that secondary in half. He actually had an interception as well. Um, however, uh, you got to look at the bad too with him. Um, he can't blow that coverage assignment against uh, Macklin. I mean. He, it looked like he basically just went after the wrong receiver and left Macklin wide open about 60 yards downfield. Um, that's going to come with getting back into football, though. I mean, getting back into the swing of things. Uh, but Dalmas as a whole, just look – that defense just looked completely different out this there in the secondary. defense, when healthy, when fully healthy, which, of course, is a lot to ask, is a reasonable defense. Uh, it's very nice to see Chris Harris go over to Denver and start becoming a – Amazing cornerback, too. How all of a sudden has two interceptions in last night's um, Monday night. What's game. his name? Drayton Florence. Uh, I believe the talk was he would be back late midseason. Yeah. Um, I, I can't remember for sure. Um, are you checking that out? Or? I'm, I'm going to try. I don't know if I'll be able to. Okay. Find it or I, I don't remember. If, if you could get Drayton Florence back, too, I mean, the defenses look good. And people like to point out, you know, you haven't played an elite offense. But as tough as the Lions' schedule is, when it comes down to elite offenses, they don't have that many. I'll actually like look through that. I mean, you know you got the Packers, but overall you don't really have to worry about too many elite uh, offenses. Right. Of course, you know, that that's not going to do you any good if you do find a way into the playoffs. But the defense is absolutely shown that they are good enough to co- to play with average offense. Well, the defensive line played spectacular right. this uh, last game. I mean, you held Michael Vick, one of the best running running quarterbacks in football, basically the most well-known running quarterback in football, 
to uh, nine carries on 59 yards, and you also sacked them three times for a loss of 25 yards. Right. I mean, it, the defensive line looked good again, or good, I should say, for the. They haven't looked terrible. I think they're getting more trash than they deserve. I think they're honestly they are. still a top ten line. They are, but they're uh, not the elite line that the money we're paying them should make. Them. Exactly, Sue. I mean, Sue right now is not playing at his first round, uh, first round capability of what everybody thought he was going to be. But that's going to time. The biggest thing I think people are forgetting is we're not getting torn up on the running game. Exactly, which used yep. to be the case. But, exactly. Uh, and, and that has a lot to do with the defensive line not getting as many sacks and being yep. more disciplined. And on the opposite side of the ball, the offensive line is actually starting to open up some holes. I mean, he didn't have a great game, but uh, what's his face? Um, LaShore? M- Mikel LaShore, yeah. I believe he had 15 carries for 79 yards, maybe. 70 yards, averaging f- 4.7 per carry. Yeah, I mean. With Joy Bell averaging 5.4 yards per yeah, carry. Yeah, there was a period where uh, Drake Bell was actually in for the game or in the I, game for it's about starting to piss me off that we're not seeing Kevin Smith yeah me too I, I was actually talking to my buddy with our, who I was watching the game with and it was taking me off I, I feel like we completely forgot he was on the team all of a sudden uh, and the guy averaged five yards per carry he's got yeah. the best yards per carry average on the team for a running back yeah. on the season yeah it's very frustrating but um, I wanted to get back to that elite offenses real quick that we were talking about you know our secondary can handle the the average ones the Bears good offense not elite I think we can handle them. Will we? Uh, will we give up points? Obviously. Right. Will we get killed? Probably not. Seahawks? No. There's no way the team will tear us up. Uh, Jaguars? No. Vikings? Uh, as much as we got, I mean, that game looked embarrassing. They only got like 230 yards on us. Yep. Packers? Elite offense. Texans? It's tough to debate. I I've always underrated the Texans. Uh, they're a great defensive team. They're a very good offensive team. Uh. They seem to be an on and off offensive team to me. It's hard to judge, but Colts, Packers, Cardinals, Falcons, Bears. You got to worry about the Falcons, the Packers, and maybe the Texans as far as lead offenses. Uh, just getting back to what we were talking about earlier, Drayton Florence got placed on the injured reserve on Wednesday, September nineteenth. The earliest he can return is Week Eleven versus okay. Green Bay. So, but we're we're getting there. I mean, we still got a little ways to go. That puts you what one, two, three, four, four games before you can return. Yep. So, um, if you can get yourself to a reasonable record at that point, I mean. The defense looks good. The off- if the offense can start scoring. Yep. I mean, the biggest thing with this team is last year, the the reason why the Lions were winning so many games is because they could play the uh, shootout victory. They could win in shootout victories. This year, I don't know if we can win in the shootout victories. I mean, yes, Stafford can get the ball down in the field, but the main objective is to get in the end zone. And so far, he's shown that in the first three quarters, he had, I mean, let's just be honest, he can't get in the end zone in the first three quarters. Don't ask me why, because I think in the fourth quarter, he had, however many touchdowns he has on the season, that's how many touchdowns well, he has in the Lions fourth quarter. the Lions have scored more points in the fourth quarter than they have in the first three quarters combined. True. So, I and mean, that's a ridiculous stat. That doesn't yeah. make any sense. No, it doesn't. But, I mean, when, you, when you're, when you like I said earlier, when you're okay, star. here we go. I'm sorry. This is a stat. I, you can go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know the stat in just a minute. When your star quarterback only has four touchdowns throughout the entire season so far, and what, we're in week six now, that's not good. I mean, you've got to have more than four touchdowns by now. Especially, and I don't mean to keep bringing it up, but especially when you have Calvin Johnson as your wide receiver. I mean, the, the fact that oh, Calvin Johnson He's has, getting the yard, but he's not getting touchdowns. Yeah, the, the fact that Calvin Johnson only has one touchdown this game, or the, up until this game, is ridiculous. And, well, he didn't get one in this game either. No, and uh, he honestly was... For Calvin Johnson, he was wide open on one of the last plays in the uh, second half to win the game, and Stafford just overthrew him. He did his little sidearm thing where he gunned it about six feet he over. He does it all the time this year, yeah. too. And I don't he, know what happened. Yeah. it's I he, Okay, here, here's a point that uh, emphasizes how many uh, times we've gotten into the red zone and not been able to finish it. Do you know what the NFL record for uh, field goals made in a season is? No idea. 40. Do you know what Jason Hansen's on track for? 45. 45 plus, because it's 45 through 50. It would be 45 through 15 games. Right. Yeah, I mean... And that's the definition of a team who's moving the ball and not scoring touchdowns. Yep, yeah, and... You, I, your offense is towards the top in the league. You're, you're, I mean, as far as total yards versus total yards against, if you look, take a look at that, you really should be probably 4-1, and one, yeah. maybe 3-2. and two. Yeah. Ba- Based on uh, just those stats alone. Yeah, it's, it's really frustrating right now as to where this team honestly could be if they were... Going to 
if they were going to be playing at their level the entire season, this team could probably be easily 4-2 and two right now, just like Chicago and Minnesota. However, they're so frustrating because they're beating themselves in these games. I mean, we didn't even, haven't even started talking about the penalties yet. They already, oh my gosh, they right. already broke the uh, league high this year for penalties. I forget how many they had in the 16 game. 16 yeah, they had, for I, 132 yards. Yeah. And I think something like 11 of those were between the offensive line on false starts and defensive line on encroachments. Yeah, and I love Jim Schwartz presser after the game saying that oh, penalties aren't that big of a deal. Or what's killing us is scoring. Yeah, well, scoring is going to be a big deal once they give or once you give them 150 yards. It's just ridiculous. And You've you know what? It. In a way, although although I, I penalties, I thought 16 penalties is a huge deal. Yeah, um, he is right in a way. I mean, yeah, but you can't put your defense into the or, or your offense but it's, into it's those the, situations. Yeah, the, well, yeah, those false starts make it awfully hard to uh, move the ball down the field and score. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know if this is the case now. I don't know if I believe Nate Burlinson caught his first touchdown pass of the year. Maybe it was the second. Kevin Smith, that we were mentioning, we're not happy about him. Do you realize he has the most yards per carry on the team? Uh, as a running back, there are some receivers with higher numbers. Yeah, but they can't carry the ball all day long, obviously. But um. He's also, at the very least, outside of the quarterback, tied for the most touchdowns on the team at two. Yep, that's... And he's played two games, really. Why is the guy who's literally been one of your best weapons not playing? I really don't know. Um, I mean, it's it's really frustrating when you have, total offense-wise, yards per game, the Lions are number two in the entire league for yards per game in offense, but yet you just cannot get... Oh, no, I'd like to know where they're up. ranked on... Uh, I don't know what's a, uh, points per game. I bet you it's nowhere near that. Oh, not at, well. I don't know because we did have that one blow up in Tennessee where both teams scored tons. But I mean, it's it's this whole season so far. I mean, we can all agree it's just been frustrating because I mean, even even the wins that we're getting now, they're not even really good wins. I mean, this past week it was a good win because we beat Philadelphia, but all you can do is take the negatives out of the game. I mean, you can look at the positives like. <laughs> All right, so the, the Lions are ranked 12th in uh, points, points per game. Points per game, right. And it, a lot of that has to do with the Tennessee game where all of a sudden they blew out for whatever it was, 46 points. And, I mean, yes, it would be nice if we could have a few more games like that, but honestly right now I don't know if we're going to. It's not looking too good when you've gone through six weeks and your starting quarterback only has four touchdowns. Um, especially uh, when he threw 40 last right, year. Right, and especially when your backup quarterback already has two. <laughs> yeah, there's I mean, there's um a lot of positive and negative to take this from this game really. Um The positive is that you're only two games back. You play the one of the, the fact that you won the game. Yeah, and you get you you're two games back going into Chicago Monday night and you have a chance to be one game back going in to week seven. I mean, that's huge. Oh, this that Chicago Chicago game coming up, I mean, that couldn't be a whole lot bigger to be no. honest. Hey, we all said that the our, a big game was the Tennessee game, then they lost, and now all of a sudden a big game is Yeah, you can't you can't lose that game. Then you fall three games out of the division race. Right. It's I, I thought going into this year actually if we split the Chicago series we'd probably miss the playoffs. If we made it we'll probably win. Yeah. Um I still feel if we lo- split we'll lose, but as far as uh if we win it or if we win it 2-0 then we'll make it. Right. That that's still unknown. I mean that's still yet to be seen. But right. uh uh it's going to be basically a hit or miss season now for the Lions. You're going to go into the next few weeks basically hoping that we can win. If we don't win then and then you know, it might be start. It might start being time to start looking at this team as maybe wanting to. Yeah, you might want to start losing for or rooting for losses just so we can get a higher it's, draft. Pick. I think it's too early for that. But I was gonna say, um, my honest hope is that the team keeps us interested. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to be talking about how. Um, well, they'll always keep you interested because if even if they <laughs> lose, they're gonna show you how many ways a team can lose in one season. But, but I mean, I don't want to see this team fall back to the point where we are out of the race. They keep in the race. You know what? Neither of us expected them to make the playoffs this year. Okay, um, here, here. If, you, if your offense gets – you want to see the team improve at the very least. You want seven, eight wins at the very least. Here's but, a big stat that I've been looking for, actually, and I, I can't believe I finally found it. Uh, passing. It goes by completions and attempts to interceptions, and this is the big one. Average per pass, 7.2 per play. Last year, I would 
bet that we were probably maybe three points or three yards, four yards higher than that because we were throwing the ball downfield more. We're not doing these dump passes anymore. For some reason, we've said it all year. Stafford has basically just lost. I don't know if it's Stafford or if the receivers just are dropping the ball or what, but it's like we have forgotten how to throw the ball downfield. I mean, well, and you know, people are making that that too deep safety argument, but for one, I don't think that was any different from last year. Right. And for two, even if it was any different than last year, they've had five weeks to figure out how to beat it. Right. If that's honestly what it is, then we have a coaching problem. Yeah. If we don't have a coach who can't figure out how to beat a defense that you're seeing week in and week out in five weeks. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. And it's good to see that we finally got our first few touch or interceptions of the season. <laughs> yeah, I know you've been wanting I've only been begging for it for the even last if, seven Even if weeks. Michael Vick leads the league in turnovers. Right. But, but I mean, the guy may have more turnovers than his team has touchdowns. Delma, the the Delmas is going to be a huge portion of that. You're going to see, I, I would not be surprised if you see this team get to five or seven by the end of the and season. And the now. funny thing is, that you're not, it's not even because of his interceptions. I think he only has like four career interceptions. Right. But, but he, he makes everybody else play better, too. I mean, and he, well, he's, he covers a lot of fields. He's really fast and he's explosive. Yep. Um, he's almost like a, a Troy Palomalu guy who isn't necessarily the best in pass, pass coverage, but being on the field, he covers so much ground yep. that other people have more help than they normally would. He's there to blow up the runs. He's He really is a Troy Palomalu, just not the same uh, level of player, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree. Um, so we've pretty much wrapped up this entire game. Make sure uh, you listen to next uh, that next week's preview because it's going to be uh, exciting. Yeah, definitely. And also keep uh, cheering on our Tigers. I know we haven't done another shot or show since the first round. We are in the ALCS going back home 2-0. Get the Yankees. JV is on the mound tonight. Uh, looking forward to that. Like game, we said, if, if if you get a World Series appearance, we will definitely get you a show on that. Oh, definitely. Um, but. As we said before, uh, Lions are going to be frustrating. They always are. Even in their winning season, they were pretty frustrating because, you know, they could have probably won more than, or games than they did. They probably could have lost more games than they should have. But uh, thank you for listening to the show again. Uh, we will probably see you guys on Saturday again for the next episode for the Monday night football game against the Bears. And for Brendan Riley, this is Tommy Riles, and you guys have a good week.